Open your eyes, ears, and heart. Connect deeper from your soul. Remember who you are. Remove all limitations of time, space, and distance. Welcome back to your ethereal eyes. Welcome to Lightwaves Radio. My name is Wendy Adams, and I am honored to have back on here Carrie Fisher. Hi, Carrie. Welcome. Hi, Wen. How are you? I'm doing amazing. How are you doing? It's great. It's been a few years. Like we went to Sedona during COVID when the world first got shut down. And that's the last time I saw you. You look great. Oh, thank you. You do too. You yeah. Really, it, it's amazing. Like we were one of the few that were not holding up in our homes. We were the ones that are like, we're not going to let this change us in any way. We're going to go travel. We're going to live. And the things that happened there are just mind-boggling, you know what I mean, with, with the healing that transpired there, it's just, I still get enlightening moments about, oh my God, it's amazing. And, and I mean, and there was something that you said on that trip too, that like shocked me back into my, you know what I mean? Like, and I appreciate just everything about that trip and our and we, we kept seeing it like it was funny and there's good coffee in Arizona. That's a plus. <laughs> and I'm not a coffee drinker, but yeah, there is. I mean, <laughs> so I hear, <laughs> but we made sure you got your coffee, right girl. I got you the oh, first yeah. thing. It's like, Oh, good Lord. If anybody needs her coffee is you first. Thing oh yeah. Just, especially the main <laughs> thing is the time frame from East coast to West coast is like, you right. know. So, so how have you, like, I don't know, like, how have you been like, what are you doing? Like, how, how, how have you, like, like we reconnected from grief and I got signs from, you know, we know that Rod passed. Right. And yeah. he was giving me signs for months and I was being stubborn and didn't want to, I didn't have a, Oh my gosh, Wendy needs me. And when I finally grasped it, like I texted you and said, can we talk? And we just picked up where we left off. And I appreciate that because you're one of the most gifted, intuitive people that I know. Oh, and I appreciate you. that in you. I don't think people realize how gifted you actually are. I really don't. Oh, I don't. Thank you. Well, you're very gifted yourself. So absolutely. You really are. So, so thank you for being, you know, it took a lot of getting it wrong before I got it right. That's for everybody. So, everybody's going through that but, you know I don't have any attachment now like practice in the art of yeah practice in the yeah practice in the art of detachment is just real important right now because I just see so much arguing online especially within the spiritual community and they're basically fighting over the same thing absolutely they're fighting you know. over the same thing but what I do find what I do find is I don't also don't see people telling me what your spiritual beliefs are. So how do I know what your, what your beliefs are? If you're just shaming, blaming, judging, criticizing, I, I do find I, I enacted a lot of psychology in my life. And what about you? Because I find that spirituality and psychology can get very intertwined for sure. Mistaken for one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Confused. I did it. You know, and that's just it. Like everybody out there, everyone listening, we have all done things or experienced things that, you know, maybe we're not proud of. That is okay. That is the process of being here. We've all hurt people, you know, and it's okay to say, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to learn from it and grow. What I find I'm... that some of the, sorry, there seems to be a delay. <laughs> Oh, well, it's the internet. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just feel like healing, healing grief and bringing out parts of me that I hid for so long, you're not allowed, you can't do that. Like grief and, and losing my sister made me like, feel like I was just standing there complete naked and just more vulnerable than I had ever been in my life. And that's the feeling that I really didn't like was the vulnerability and um 
I, I triggered myself. I didn't want to heal that vulnerability. And then once I started to life got much easier, um, it's okay to be vulnerable. And I feel like people need to know that it's okay to shed tears. It's okay to feel your feelings. It's okay. It's imperative that you feel your feelings imperative. Um, too much miscommunication happens over when we don't talk about our feelings. Absolutely. I'm proof positive of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because when we share our experiences, that's when we really truly can assist people. Many people think that's that, how we, sorry. No, I was going to say that's how we connect is by sharing. Yeah. Absolutely. And many people think that because this awakening process has happened in waves and we know that some of us began waking up decades ago and coming through this process, there is a difference between being awakened and being enlightened. Mm -hmm. This book that I'm listening to, um, I don't know the author's name right off the bat, but it's how your brain changes with enlightenment. And um, there was seven questions that I heard yesterday. And um, I was wondering if I could just throw those questions out there to see if the collective of people that are so healed and healing do this. Absolutely. I'm just curious because I felt like I got smacked back and forth in my face when I heard these. So the first one is identify your own beliefs and recognize their biases. Whoa. Wow. I don't really know anybody that does that. Um, number two, proficient in developing alternative points of view. Number three, do not assume that the other person will think or act like you. That's massive. Big. Yes. Oh my gosh. Number four, imagine the belief that you are holding is wrong and then develop a scenario to make it true. I like that. And number five is try out other personal beliefs and act out the role. And number six is play devil's advocate. I get called difficult because I'm devil's advocate. You know, I'm that, whatever. <laughs> advocate, and yeah. Number seven is interact with different backgrounds and beliefs. This is what the CIA uses to train their intelligence crew. So I figured, um, I, I find a lot of people are mistaking. They see where I feel like we're meant to in that book, we have these little bangs of enlightenment and they're meant to raise our frequency. And then we're meant to come back down to earth. That's going to happen for a very long time before you get the big ones. Your brain has to be in a very healed trauma informed place before you're going to be enlightened to the awakening is destruction of it's what destruction is it of actually? all your programming and beliefs yes, and everything that it you has know. A, there is no there's no book work out there that says that enlightenment is a spiritual concept it's a destructive process so you're aware of the injustice that's the definition you're aware of earth's injustices like Absolutely. if you know me personally i've got injustices happening everywhere in my life right now yeah everywhere and that's for me to learn, grow, and heal from. And it concerns me, these people that say, oh, I don't have that work to do because I'm this or I'm that. Huh? Who yeah, said? exactly. We're all, and you said about waves, we're all, and when I started channeling about ascensions, I was told waves too. And it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. It never goes just up. Exactly. It's like and that Price is Right mountain game where the guy's just riding up, you know, and then he falls <laughs> over. Well, you know, and I gotta say, like, it, it is amazing, like, this whole process, and it is, like, we are all of one, but we're not one, and so our experiences are going to be different, and I know for me, you're asking, like, what are your spiritual beliefs? Well, for me, I mean, I would, like, as you know, I was born with gifts and abilities, had them my whole life, and then mm -hmm. I've had so many actual clinical deaths, and yes. after I got hit by lightning, by pushing my son out of the way, I took the hit. Um, because people are like, well, you were being struck down. It's like, no, I saved my son. I took the hit for him. That's love. That's me. Um, and but a year later, I was called before creator and literally told you are ready. It is server cease for you. And I was told my original name. So I literally went before creator and, you know, was told you are here to heal and make a difference that there is a healing harmonic resonance in your voice. Get your voice heard by many. You will assist the healing of the world. Yeah. And literally, 
what he did is he held my hands and it was so beautiful because in that moment my hands turned gold and he said use your hands to um, heal and to assist that's your purpose so I was really I feel blessed in a way that I was told my purpose extremely told it and um, I was shown it. I was told too and I've never been more f- petrified like because mine happened the day that Archangel Michael reversed an accident it was a cobalt blue of lightning that I saw come down I saw the portal I went through it I started to shake and cry and I heard you will now serve and I was like whatever that means I I didn't even understand the magnitude now I understand people mistake my my passion as anger um I speak with a high resonant because I was a hairdresser for 35 years talking over blow dryers you want to get stuff mixed up blow dry your hair and tell a story because you're not going to hear it all so like people really should get to know the the heart of the person and not the mind of the person. Oh, I read this too in an enlightenment book. If you have to think about your answer, that was in Course in Miracles. That's not enlightened. The answer comes from here and requires no thought. It's and, so if, true. and if people understand heart mapping, it senses stuff three hours to three months before it happens. I can go a little bit farther into that. It took a long time of practicing ethical mediumship. I think sometimes people come online and they, you know, I have a following on one social media and it's videos and, and I don't mind putting it out there, but people have one experience and call themselves enlightened. My question is what's going to happen when death knocks at your door? Well, I can answer that (laughs) 25 deaths. Um, Yeah. But for yeah. others, absolutely. You know, it Question. is incredible. Did you feel anything with any of those deaths physically? Did you feel pain or anything like that? No. And it was, and a lot of people are like, well, you know, like were you roped into coming back? Like, no, I was given a choice. Would you like to stay or would you like to go back and assist your brothers and sisters with the evolution of humanity? Like you, you could really make a difference. You can heal and you can assist. And I was given the choice and I did choose to come back yeah. maybe too many and, times, but I'm and here. Then we, and we wake up in that bed, wherever we are. And we're like, why? I remember as a small child having dreams of St. Germain. And I say it's Moses, maybe it was somebody else, but he was literally sitting on a stump with his hands like this. Moses. And he, and, and I was skipping around him and he's just going, you know, you made this pact to serve with our father before you came. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I've changed my mind. And he's like, you, you don't, don't get have to. a choice. <laughs> it's server sees you want to be here or not. Like, yeah. and, you know, I just wanted to be with my friends and go out and drink. And the more I study alcohol, the more I wonder why any, I heard a a doctor describe it as drinking a disinfectant the other day and that that Mm -hmm. hit my heart for every alcoholic beverage that I drank I quit drinking because I got way way psychic and psychic is just part of what naturally comes when you heal your trauma it's natural I'm trained in it you're trained in it like I would trust you more than anybody on the face of this earth was sending a reading to Oh, thank you. If I needed it, I would. You've connected me to my sister. You've given me healing messages from her. You have smacked me in the middle of the night on the phone when I am in a trauma response or anger response, a residual one, and you help bring me back to reality. I don't think people understand how soft serving you actually are within your views like you will not ever judge anybody it cracks me up if you hear somebody said I judged and I was like she doesn't even judge herself no we're not here for that no we're not and I get I think that word needs to be taken out of our um repertoire of words because it's just I now that I study basic psychology I can look especially online and you can see the unhealed aspects of people that are trying to come out and I want the best for everybody Mm -hmm. I don't 
I just don't want anybody to get to that point where I'm just so enlightened that I can't learn anything else. And then you've got source coming in saying, here, hold this beer because I'm going to show you that you don't know. I realized how small I was when my sister died. I realized how small I actually was. Yeah, that was, and that my very first thought when that happened was, if you think I'm going down this rabbit hill, Alice, and down I went. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's true. It's just kind of, it, it is such a challenge going through that. And even being like a, a medium, even being psychic and intuitive and knowing that it's not the end, it still is not the same. And it is a, a process that you go through every day, truly. I had to go through a hysterectomy by myself. Nobody helped me with it, right? So when I was in the hospital and I woke up and I almost called you because it was during COVID. I was, it was really weird. It was like the walking dead being in there with all this plastic and there was nobody in the, on the COVID floor at the time. Um, it was just black. And uh, I had, I came out of anesthesia I woke up and the doctor was standing to my right. And my first words were, what's my blood type? And she said, O positive. She says, COVID can't stick to O positive. So you'd have better. And I said, well, that's good to know. And I said, did I try to leave? I said, I, I see you saying not on my watch, not on my dime. And she touched my arm and she said, I have a brother in spirit too. You think I can't see? And I was like, darn it. <laughs> So I chose a doctor to keep me here. But anyhow, I finally talked the doctor into two pain medicines. That's all I took, two Percocet. And I had Technicolor dreams. My sister was standing off in the distance with her arms crossed. And I was in a misty area. And I would look up and I would see a soul that I've worked with that helped their family here. So I had six hours of dream space that I didn't get to go to her because I wouldn't have come back but I got to hug all of these people that I have given readings for because I openly started to challenge myself back in like 2008, 2009 at work. And I got really good at it. And then people just started to wait for me. Like, it's really weird. The stuff that happens when you're a medium, isn't it? It's like, you can't make, like, we couldn't make half the stuff up that happened on our road trip. Oh my goodness. You, no. And I get, I don't know about you, but I get so many signs that I'm tired of seeing signs. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was a wild experience and I still don't know how to ground that. And that was in 2020 that I had that. Um, and I had surgery the day that they stormed the Capitol. So at least I was in the hospital. Nobody's coming there. Right. But <laughs> exactly. It was, it was really weird to have to have, but my back pain was gone. I thought it was um, sciatica. And that's what I get for thinking that my issue was something and it wasn't even that. So when your beliefs are challenged, you're meant to just rise that frequency, but not with ego. And it takes right. a long time to check that spiritual ego because of the instant hit to the heart when your beliefs are challenged. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that it, like I'm, Got to say, first of all, you cannot have a human experience without the ego. Like, face it, you're not. You have to going have to it to live. Yeah, you have there's to lights have and it. dark aspects of an ego. It's it's our and our personality and our childhood, and so we have to take into so many considerations. Like, I grew up thinking that it was normal to go to a wedding with alcohol. And then when I didn't, as a teenager, I thought it was the oddest thing because it was normalized in my life at such a young age. Exactly. There's all that programming that we're taught mm -hmm. and we, what we have perceived as our experiences, that's what we perceive to be the way it should be. And there are other ways. And I think that that's a big thing that people need to realize. And they are during this process. And I know that personally, since I put my boundaries up, and they're healthy because my God, I've been in, I was in therapy for five years and then trauma therapy for a year. Um, and I find that people that have never been to therapy like to think that they can tell you what you need to do. Perhaps you should try it. Like I was with, I, I came into your life right before you decided to do that. And that's, that's when I needed to be there because I, 
I'm proud of you for feeling emotion like that because it's really hard to go down and let that deep, deep solar plexus hurt out. It hard. is. It is absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing. Um, when you go through that process, there's always something residual, something that's holding those emotions in. And I always say you have to feel it to heal it. So I'm a person that believes in, I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. So if I'm going to okay. tell people, you know, hey, you need to feel it to heal it, I need to do that too. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. I did reach out and it's something that I never thought I would do. But, you know, Patrick Rodriguez was amazing, amazing, amazing therapist. I highly recommend him. He's been on, you know, the show and everything in the past. So if anybody's going through that, he just works miracles, truly. And, and I, got, I, I got to be honest with you, if he wanted to record a video and, and do a session, I have no secrets. Well, I can let him know you're open to that. And yeah, see let him like know to. because you know, I mean, when I, I called a therapist the day that my sister passed away, standing in my brother's garage, I said, my left brain cannot handle this. It's going to sludge out of my ear. My right brain hears her. And it was just that battle because she was doing things immediately not to, to let me know she wasn't gone. So she wouldn't let me mourn her. Does that yeah, make sense? It does. Because like I try to cry and she'd make me eat our mother's perfume. Like and then you're gagging and like, I, I'm trying to find her. And I kept saying in the beginning, when I fall asleep, I'm going to come get you and kick your butt. I never <laughs> called her. Yeah. But like she, being a medium is trippy like that. We get to have those oh, experiences. The picture that you sent when, when I called you for Rod and I said, look at these doves on my window. And you said, oh, I knew it was you because there's a massive rainbow. You yeah. sent me the picture of that rainbow. Remember when I brightened it up and we saw nothing but my sister's face? Yeah. And I'm like, I know it's for you. I just knew it. Yeah. yeah. We've had such, and just bald eagle encounters. Like the one day that we were on the phone and you were talking about the hawk and, and we were looking it up. And then I literally had one come up to my window and like stare me and then go east. Okay. We know what you're talking about. We're here. They're representing. It's wild. It's wild. I saw 20 eagles out my window a couple weeks ago. It's yeah. beautiful. I love that they're repopulating because that's how, that's a bird's eye view there. When spirit comes through, I feel like they're showing you from a bird's eye view what they see. Oh, and yeah. I mean, that's another concept I'm curious. Can you please tell me where the star seeds are headed? Because I've never gotten to discrete information on where are we headed to a new planet are we all headed to a new vibration are we all headed to the same awareness or are they just masquerading as healed when they haven't even and there's a lot of deflection in this spiritual community and it's wow. mind-blowing but I've been seeing the same regenerate and I'm seeing it on TikTok as well regenerated star seed and the only thing that happens is the person gets younger Okay. Well, it, how do, how do you treat other people? That's well, my question. Well, I've been told messages uh -huh. communicated to me from above. Okay. We, there are many of us who are actual ancient souls who have been yes. here from the beginning. We have been coming back repeatedly time and time again. Now it's time for the next generation to step up. When we exit this time, if we have done everything that we were meant to, which most of us have, we are not coming back. The star seeds will start out in the next incarnation. So they're Can here I... to kind of train with us, but instead they want to fight us. They want to um, argue. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, because they don't get it. Here's the thing. When I, I know people that have claimed they've been star seeds that I've done readings for, and let me be clear, I have memories from Lemuria and Sirius. And I Atlantis work with, and... Uh, I work with NASA about us living on Mars. So if people say, oh, it's a crock of crap, do you want his number? Because having a NASA employee as your friend, like he's off, he, he, he's wild. And what he went through, like I finished watching Stranger Things and messaged him and I said, hold on, you were at Montauk, what happened? And then I connected him to the scientist that he was, that passed away, that was his twin soul yeah okay like too many people want the twin flame connection but they don't want to do the inner work that's required for the vibrational because if they came together you'd wake up about thirty thousand people around you 
Yes. And I just don't want to be responsible for anybody going into psychosis. No, definitely not. But like, and it is a process, Are like all there? of this. Yeah, I'm on delay here, I think. You'll hear me in a moment. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Did the video freeze? Maybe it's frozen. My end, it hasn't. You hear me? Hello. Yes, you were frozen for just a second. I, I knew that Are was there? coming. I'm here. I'm here. So, yeah, like this process is challenging, definitely for everybody. Are you there? And it's cutting in and out, but yes, I'm here. <laughs> of course, you know, when we first started the call, we had two of yous on the screen, like leave it to us to have energetic and technological difficulties. Well, I mean, when you're, when your energy frequency is like that, that's how it happens. Um, I, I don't know, like I stopped looking for a guru or anything like that. Like when my sister died and I was an atheist, I didn't have any faith whatsoever. And then through experiences of me studying religion, because people shamed me with religion, I started to study it. And I was listening to a book about the dark night of the soul and was having some pretty traumatic human stuff. I went into the bed, paused the book, went into the bedroom, asked God why he had forsaken me, came back out, pushed play. And that's what he said on the book. When you were coming out of the dark night of the soul, you would ask God what, and I was like, what? So I realized that religion and its basis is are already in us. And it's just a matter of us bringing out those positive parts of it that we can help teach people with. Absolutely. Are you there? I, I am. I think we're going to have to cut this a little short, though, because it keeps cutting in and out. Um, perhaps we got all the messages out that we were meant to on yeah. this particular episode. But I'm I'm honored to have you back. And like, and it took a lot of courage for you to call up that's and say, it. hey, I mean, I'm I sorry. Just, I'm here. Can we? Can that's, we... that's it. Like, Own our it, stuff. Own your behavior, people. I find that a lot. That's it. Like I'm waiting on apologies years down the line with people that know they've done stuff wrong. And I hate to tell you, but psychology works like this. Yeah. When you ignore a person, you fall more for them. It's just yeah. true. People call me a know-it-all. And I mean, I have said to some people that like, compared to some I am, but it's because I've actively worked on healing my trauma. That's all I've done is heal, study, learn, grow. The stuff that came through with the enlight little bangs of enlightenment, I still haven't implemented all that into my life. I heard one time it said, you're only as good as your channels. True. I was like, wow, that's well, when you're channeling creator, I just, that's I good. just wish... Recent, recently I've heard that I've been channeling a raw collective so it's just I write sloppy though because it's so fast um but it's interesting because I love the feeling when it comes in it's just like you're online and then tingled everywhere and then I write and then I read it and I'm like oh wow that's, I and that. I learn something immediately because I don't have an attachment to what it means like I feel like too many people don't give people a real chance because of their inner fears. Does that make sense? Absolutely. But if we came together for our inner fears and we actually, here's what I noticed when I do readings and people will bring out that long lost secret or that deep down something, 100% of them say, man, I feel better. My God, I have so much relief by getting that out. Yeah, definitely. everybody falls into that category. And just because you claim you're spiritual doesn't mean that you, I find that if you're spiritual, you got more traumatic work to do than the normal person. Like I said, if you're not woke to the injustices of the world, what are you doing? Exactly. Like I'm considering going back to law school to get a civil law degree because of people thinking that it's okay to violate people's rights in the name of source. It's not okay. There's a lot of bullying going on online on TikTok. And the girl said, like, what do you want me to do? Kill myself? She's right. 
when people don't agree with you, like, what do they want? And the reality is, is you've just triggered something that they need to look at in themselves. And they automatically get so protective that they don't visit those behaviors every day. When you wake up every day, you should ask yourself these seven questions and be the best that you can be. If I have those days and I'm not going to be my best, I just stay quiet and feel my emotions. Absolutely. Um, I just, and having a, and social media is a love hate relationship. Is it not like I get tons of support in so many ways. And then you post something about mental health and nobody does, do people not understand mental health? And just because I say mental health, everybody should take care of it. Everybody. Well, you need to understand that when it comes to the, the internet and doing social media and stuff like that, that many, many, many of the profiles, first of all, are not real. You need to read the energy always, you know, just because they have a picture of this great looking, you know, guy on there doesn't mean that's who you're communicating with. There's a, you know, TV show catfish about this, like nine times out of 10. The person is not who they say they are. And there's also the opportunity or, you know, to read the energy and to see what's, what kind of um, person they are. Like if you don't use your gifts and abilities, then what you get and what happens to you is kind of on you because you, you should know by now that you have to read energy. That is the one thing. Don't listen to people's words, watch their action, but more than that, read the energy because the energy will never steer you wrong. And the fact of the matter is, is your your 99 point. It blows my mind, people that don't realize that actions speak louder than words. You can tell me that you love me, but if you're ignoring me, if you're not supporting me online, see, I had a relationship like that one time where I went on and I supported them online. They rarely ever liked any of my posts, but brag how amazing I am. What is that? Is that underlying jealousy that reason people do that? It happens a lot on social media, I'm afraid. that And people think that they know you. Like, I'm outspoken. Anybody, I keep all my stuff public. I have nothing to hide. I've also been, in previous years, attacked by some of the online community. And the only thing that I want to say to them three years later is, You talked about me versus focusing on yourself. Yeah. You know, to each their own. They think that. Yeah. To each their own on that. But like really, it can be really a toxic. I think that you just need to understand. I'm trying to untoxic social media. Sorry. The the internet is cutting us in and out. Um, when it comes to social media, yeah, like for me, it's not my platform. I've never really given a shit about it either way. It's not going to permanently be here. So for those of you that is such a part of your daily day, get mm-hmm. used to weaning yourself off of it because that is what's coming. Mm-hmm. And um, when it comes to that, like I got to say, many of the people are not real. Like, are they in your real life? Do you spend time with them in a daily, in a daily part of your life? Um, no, most of the people you don't, most of them aren't even the pictures that you're looking at. It's not even, you know, who you're thinking that they are. You need to just really, like I said, read the energy, but understand Mm -hmm. this, that if you can't include people in your present, you can't have a future with them because the present is all there is. That's it. Present time awareness is all we have. That's it. Every single day of every moment. And you have got, what is it? law of attraction you've got seven seconds before your thought starts to manifest seven yeah Yeah. you gotta be ready i know i know i do a lot of my manifestation work when i'm angry and and that's not when i want to do it um you know you helped me through holy fire which is was a purification process on earth and that uh, you were on the, I didn't even understand it, but I was being shown in back-to-back visions, how I had hurt people. Whew. Yeah, that's hard. It is. That was massive to go through. Well, I just want to Mass- say, I didn't know what it was. I just heard spirit say, holy fire's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just want to say that I know we're about out of time here on this show, but 
I would love to do some more with you because you have a lot okay. of knowledge. And um, I really respect the fact that like you kind of reached out out of all this time. And like, I love that you own your ship, you own your actions, you own everything. And I appreciate you for that and your gifts and abilities. So thank you. Like that means the world to me. So I hope you'll come I back on have. and That's do some more. Sorry guys. I'm grateful like we got that I have you in my life because you definitely become, <laughs> we're definitely, we're definitely there for one another. So I appreciate you being there in that capacity because not many people can handle the deep pain. So I appreciate that very much, very Thank much. You. And guys, we'll do some more very upcoming much. in the upcoming weeks. We'll do some more segments and shows together. And I just want to thank you all for listening to light waves radio. Have an amazing day, everyone. Let me just, let's just say if anybody,